Sacktown is on another level these days. Like, the city is popping. How do you find the best spots in your city? That's a good question. We're hitting the streets and going right to the source. What's one of your favorite places to eat? Love that place. It's new. Just check it out. It's awesome. We're asking you, what neighborhood restaurant is doing things differently? Um, the vibe is really, really fun. Best place to satisfy your need for speed? I skipped work to be here today. <laughs> and where do you go for a thrill? <laughs> Best outdoor adventure? Wow, that's great. How about some hidden gems? You just feel like your family here. You're leading the tour. And we're along for the ride. Go big or go home. Because the best way to be in the know is by word of mouth. Come a little closer, yeah. like, oh, you guys something like a bite or something? Yeah. What's your favorite kind of hole in the wall restaurant? Uh, Something de Flores, but it's over on Northgate. If you like Salvadorian food, it's pretty good. Oh, you know what? That is a really good place in Roseville. It's called Umi Sushi. Really nice place. Hold in the wall, yeah. If I'm hungry for breakfast or lunch, something really warm and yummy, I love Nopalitos. It's a small little hole in the wall. You wouldn't know about it unless you know about it. You have to make it a point to go there. Rose makes better pancakes than I do. <laughs> My name's Dave, and I am the co-owner of this fine establishment. It's called Nopalitos. It's like you're inviting someone into your home. We wanted it to be that way. It's like a community, a neighborhood. You feel the love. You taste it in the food. You just feel like your family here. It's like having a little party every day. It's like smothered nachos with some cactus and chorizo in there. It's excellent. Pancakes are so big. They are absolutely the best pancakes in Sacramento. Very delicious. Very, very delicious. We opened this place 28 years ago. Yeah. I come here every Thursday and I meet one of my best friends. I've been doing that for six years. I love Rose. Rose is like one of my other best friends. Yeah, even if the line's out the door, she always takes time to say hi and say, how's your day? And yeah, she's very personable. She treats everybody like an extended family. And I think that's probably the main reason why people feel so comfortable coming here is, is, is because of her. Food is, is delicious. I never seem to get enough of their beans. So I had to get a side to go. <laughs> it's a very popular style of cooking. What really is great about this place is I, when I do go out into the dining room on occasion and I see all of the folks having a great time, that makes me happy. It's perfect. If you need an adrenaline rush, what's something you do? I mean, I grew up like riding quads and stuff like that, and so I love that, I love the speed. Dude, we go to that K1 racing, K1 speed. That place is pretty fun. Just go-kart racing, but you go incredibly fast. You would go to Sacramento Raceway. I used to go out there with my sister when I was younger to pick up guys, I'll be honest. And um, we'd go out there on Wednesdays. That was a great place to go. You'd hang out. It's family-oriented. It's singles-oriented. It's a great place to go. buddy comes out here and he says you can drive a quarter mile as fast as you can so I got my baby out here to see what she can do. Loud fast cars, everybody's into that aren't they? <laughs> I'm the acting race director of Sacramento Raceway. We are the last family owned drag strip in California, the only one in the whole Sacramento area. Street legal fun drags were pretty much the first event that my grandparents ran in 1970 and it's been going every week from February through November, so over 30 years. Racing's in you, it gets in your blood. It hooks you from the inside. You don't even have to have a fast car, really. If you know what your car will do, you could come out here and win it all. 
I mean, you get every kind of vehicle out here, every kind of combination. And so it's not, it's not a sport of kings, it's a sport of everyday drivers. Um, it's just a stock truck. I use it for work, nothing fancy about it. Man, I'm looking around and some of these cars are probably worth more than my house right now. All right, here's my guy, it's time to race. I guess he's ready. <laughs> a little bit nervous, a lot nervous. Now or never, let's go. That guy was fast. I bring my kids out here, we'll camp out here for the weekend, and there's hundreds of other families doing the same thing. It's cheap, it's great fun, you can meet a lot of new people, see some really fast cars, and just have a great time. It's good work to be here today. <laughs> just bring your car, bring your competitive edge, and uh, we'll get you set up at the gate. It's exciting, it's safe, and it's a place that you can come and not get a speeding ticket. <laughs> When you need a break, how do you escape reality? And what unique class is helping people connect with nature? Oh, it's pretty. What's your favorite thing to do in the city? There's so many places. Equin Rig is fabulous if you want a really good steak. We want your ideas. You're the tour guide. Oh, okay. Like top secret stuff. Kim, Kim on Fo or Fo on Kim? One of those. You guys can see it. It's awesome, man. It's probably the best Fo restaurant I've ever had. Visit kcra.com slash word of mouth to tell us where to go next. Okay, have you ever tried an escape room before? You know what? I don't even know what an escape room is. <laughs> and we did a Sherlock Holmes room. We didn't beat the room. <laughs> we got so close, but it was so much fun. I've heard of the escape room. Okay. I have, but I wouldn't do it. Yeah, it's wild though. I don't be locked nowhere. Going into Skull Witch in the chamber, going in there, they're actually voted actually as one of the best in Northern California or number one uh, in the country. I loved it because of the details, the fact that it is super close. I absolutely love going there. I mean, it's just absolutely awesome. Very nervous right now, actually. Real people being in there and messing with my head. <laughs> that is what I'm afraid of. Oh, this is real small. <laughs> we opened our escape room back in August 2016. Uh, my husband Joe came up with the idea and pitched it to our best friends. I loved adventure games growing up and what started as a hobby turned into the number one escape room in the country. So welcome everybody to our Victorian Home of Spring Halls. It's such a new concept. People don't really know what it is. I don't really know what to expect. Oh my God. <laughs> An escape room is an interactive adventure and you are given a task of figuring out how to escape. So everyone has to work together okay, hold on. I found something else. to solve the puzzles and escape the predicament that you're in. To find my code, just use your hand. Connect these points to understand. The games can take up to nine months to build. We like to make it really feel that you're in a different place. You can join your friends, you can book a single ticket and join other people that you don't know. It really is a team effort and it's a lot of fun. Oh. And Chambered is really for everybody. It's just a fun thing for everybody to really enjoy. Our containment breach game is our entry level game. That one has about a 35% escape rate. Our Whispering Halls is a little harder, and that one has about a 20% escape rate. And our Skull Witch game is our hardest game, and that game has a 10% escape rate. Uh, people come out really excited. It was cool, it was intense, it was intense. A lot of detailed pieces. It was excited when we found it. I got this, I got that. Okay, what does this go to? I thought I was gonna be more scared, but I think I was so excited and in the game. I'm glad I pushed myself out of my comfort zone, meet new people, and it was definitely an experience. If you're on the fence, get off that fence. Get in the room. Get in the room, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Are you
you guys outdoorsy at all? Yeah, I mean, I'm not like a backpacker or anything, but... My life is outdoors. I'm a whitewater rafting guide, I climb mountains. Uh, I actually just went camping this last weekend in the Day Bay. But there's also the port in Old Sacramento. You go down uh, by the boat and just make your way to the port. Uh, I grew up camping, so being outdoors is like my favorite thing to do. I love fly fishing. You know, I've seen people fight real simplistic setups that just catch fish, just yanking them out of the water. I'm like, wow. Yeah, yeah, you got those on backwards, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mike Willis. I teach Tenkara fly fishing. Tenkara is a style of fly fishing that originated in Japan. The thing about Tenkara is the simplicity, and so your rod has no reel. It's said that Tenkara means from heaven. That idea that the fish is just seeing the fly coming down from heaven, very, very natural. So generally when I take people out for a lesson, we'll meet at a centralized location close to where the water is, go over some of the basics, clients are able to do it on their own very, very quickly. As you can see, it'll bend itself almost in half. And so it's the rod that actually takes the fight of the fish. So we'll meet and then head out to fish. Something about fishing together, picking apart a stream, the camaraderie that goes along with it, the fishtails that go along with it. It's, it's just like going out and having fun with your friends. Fish, they say, live in beautiful places. And it's, it's absolutely true. The spot we're fishing today is the South Fork of the American River. You don't need a permit, but you do need a fishing license. The difference between Western fly fishing and Tenkara is the fly line. It gets your food source out further. Versus Tenkara, you're using just your finesse. This is my first time ever fly fishing, and I'd say it's been great. This is something I'll be doing over and over again. I have a full-time gig as a teacher in Elk Grove. Tenkara is a hobby of mine, and I love to share it with anybody. Where's the best spot for craft cocktails? Off the grid. And where in town can you learn how to build an app and a table in one giant workspace? The best way to find out what's going on is to ask each other. So we're hitting the street to discover the things you can only find by word of mouth. Tell me, what's the most unique dining experience you've had? In the Roseville area, there's a place called Zest. That'd probably be my number one choice. So there's a place called Arthur Henry's. It's off 2nd and Broadway. They have this grill that's in the center of their restaurant, and you cook your own steak there, which is pretty cool. I think the ambiance at Shangri-La is really unique and definitely something like necessary for that area. There's nothing around there really like it. It's like Palm Springs vibe right in the middle of Fair Oaks, um, and their food's really amazing, too. Look at the camera, or are you? Okay. <laughs> my name is Summer Peterson. I am the proprietress of Shangri-La, my hometown of Fair Oaks. We are at the entrance to Fair Oaks Village, or the Chicken Park, as most of us call it. This area was kind of starving for some local eateries and some nice places. I kept driving past this old mortuary with a restaurant bar for lease sign out front. Finally, I had reached out and made a pretty big bet on Fair Oaks. I don't think there's anything like this in the area. No, <laughs> I think anything that's new and different is great. We had knocked out a big wall for our 360 bar. We built the bocce ball courts. We just wanted that leisure. And you can still have a cocktail in your hand and throw a ball. I feel like you're not even in Fair Oaks anymore. <laughs> the vibe is really, really fun. People are coming from all around Sacramento County and beyond. It's a nice little diverse mix. It kind of gives me that LA vibe. I think it really brings something fun and interesting to a location that doesn't really have anything like this. What we're doing in the kitchen is really exciting. We are doing a fine dining approach to comfort food where everything is extremely fresh, hyper local, and we make everything in-house from scratch. 
we keep our menu seasonal forward. <laughs> we want everybody to sit at the table and kind of share off of each other. The food was great, the service was wonderful. The name Shangri-La is this, you know, mythical utopian place where you go to escape your troubles. I'm gonna do my best to provide that. <laughs> Tell me some hobbies that you have. Oh man, I love surfing. So yeah, that's kind of my thing. I uh, from uh, the Powerhouse Pub in Folsom. Uh, I like to try things. I, I'm not an expert in any kind of craft, but I like to try doing all kinds of things. I've given spinning wool a try. Um, Hacker Lab is designed for people who are looking for a workspace. It doesn't have to be you know, a typical artist type. It's just, just um, available for people. You have to take like a few classes beforehand to learn how to use their machines. Um, but yeah, it's really cool. Christina, do you know off the top of your head how much your equipment is worth like $500,000? Why do you know that? Hacker Lab is a co-working and education space that is super community driven. Uh, there are a lot of co-working spaces in Sacramento. Ours is 24-7, which is not super common. Yeah, I've been a member for five years. I teach welding here. I also teach kids here. I, you know, kind of use a lot of the different tools in here and get to do a ton of different stuff. Someone told me about a space where I could uh, continue my passion for woodworking without having to buy very expensive woodworking tools. We have a full maker space including wood shop, metal shop, 3D printing, laser cutting, jewelry studio, photo lab. So if you are interested in trying one of those things, taking one of our classes is a great way to do it. If you are a member, you get steeply discounted classes and you get access to all of the tools and equipment at each space. You have all walks of life, man. They do art, they do handcrafting, they code. You have engineers. There's just so much going on here that this is probably the place you want to be. The first six months that I was here, I was tinkering, uh, just very simple things. And once I got a better grasp, we launched an online uh, Etsy shop. My shadow casting lamps in particular uh, took off immediately. It's been incredible. I mean, we went from zero to I was able to make a living after my first year here. Working out of Hacker Lab is a very collaborative um, environment. Everyone is very helpful. Membership gives you access to all three of our locations in Midtown, Brooklyn, and Rancho Cordova. Sacramento especially has a really supportive community. It's a place where people are very creative. It's super diverse. But as a growing and kind of sprawled out city, uh, I've never seen a resource quite like Hacker Lab. What downtown hotspot makes working out feel like going out? like to stay fit and active and what do you do if you do? Usually I'll go and hit some golf balls at Bing Maloney or Hagen Oaks. I don't want to blow up the spot but it's called Consumers River Gorge and it's a great easily accessible family crag. Um, so if you're into climbing you can go to Consumers River Gorge. I do a lot of cardio at uh, a cycle studio here downtown called All City Riders. It's like hardcore balls to the wall biking. <laughs> If I say go faster, go faster. If I say stand up, stand up. If I say sit down, sit down. My name is Brian Washington. I am the owner of All City Riders. We're an indoor cycling studio in downtown Sacramento. This is a club-like atmosphere. Four, three, two, it's really cool. He's got like lighting that goes over the ceilings and it goes with the music. It's dope. We will try to get you a high heart rate and calories burned within a 30 minute span. He brings a great energy. While you're dying, you enjoy it. <laughs> he always keeps it real fun, energetic, and I burn a lot of calories. I sweat a lot. 
With our screen, we can take you through the streets of New York City, San Francisco, Los Angeles, an augmented world. One of the things that makes us different is we've created an app. You create an avatar that mimics yourself. That avatar would then be on screen every time you ride. Part of what can be intimidating is you're among all these people you perceive to be really fit. When they come in, I think that intimidation can be taken away. We designed a series that would introduce somebody that was brand new to cycling. It's a small setting with some opportunities for one-on-one -on -one attention for each rider. I like to say we're kind of the barbershop of fitness studios. It's kind of a social hour. While you're huffing and puffing. Bobby, listen, Bobby came in and I'm about to sweat your <laughs> You know as soon as you leave here what you did while you were here. How many calories you burn, how fast you're going, and how far you've gone. That information is saved and you'll have an idea of exactly how you performed throughout that time. My father was a huge cyclist. He inspired me to open this place. He was able to live out his dream. And then by happen chance, I was able to be inspired by a moment in his life to do something that's probably way outside the scope that he thought I'd be doing. We're uncovering the city's best kept secrets, but we need help. Tokyo Steakhouse. Oh my God. The salmon off the hood. So we're asking the people who know best. If you need good Mexican food, I would go to Messi's Tacos off Pacific. It's a kind of a taco stand. Bigger no taco stand, but it's the best you find. We want to hear from you. Visit kcra.com slash word of mouth to let us know about the hidden gems in your area. That furry thing right there. Oh my god, is that a chinchilla? <laughs> <laughs> Don't get my crop sweatshirt, okay? Okay, okay. How many takes do we get? It does? Make sure you Photoshop out this crap, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, no, you're doing great. You're doing great. You're doing great. You're doing great. You're doing great.